Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us for this week's edition of Your Mortgage Process. I, of course, am your host, Greg Wareham, and we appreciate you taking the time today. So Nick and I got to do something different this week, and we're going to do it for the next few weeks. We're going to be on location shooting from the American Hotel in Freehold, New Jersey, for eight weeks covering a, a sales event, and it's a growth and development event. All right, so the event that we're at, it is called Bold, and it's a Keller Williams eight-part training event that's really geared towards getting salespeople into the right paradigm with the right systems and processes to take their business to the next level. It's a perfect time of year to do it, right? It's September, early September. This class will be over sometime in October, and it really lets everyone gear up going into 2023. Now, I'm somebody that really subscribes to education and growth, right? I've always looked at things like if you're not growing, you're dying. And everyone's got a choice to make. Whether or not the choice is good or the choice is bad, everyone has a choice. Am I growing or am I dying? And we choose growth, right? We want to be able to grow and develop and become better at what we're at. So what we're going to be doing while we're at this event, we're going to be interviewing a lot of different people. And we're going to get their vision as to where they are, what they're trying to accomplish, and where they're looking to go. And then we're going to take that same group of individuals, and we're going to do a before and after. So we're going to see where they're at at the beginning, and then where they end up with everything. So we're really looking forward to doing this. We're looking forward to uh, our listeners out there partaking and hearing what's going on. So with that being said, we're going to start by interviewing our first guest. So we're going to start by welcoming David Caputo to the show. David, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So David, I got some questions for you. I know we're at this fantastic training event, sales training event. You know, what level are you currently in your career? Wow. Um, it's a good question. I, I think you're are you ever at the top? I mean, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? You, yeah. you no matter where you are, there's always room for improvement. It, isn't it, it, there is. Always. So where are we trying to get in the next even 12 months? Where um, do we see ourselves? How much growth do we want to have? My growth, I, I just got to focus on uh, my schedule. Okay. Keeping to it. Yep. And having something solid. I got some, uh, I'm doing an SEO uh class. Yeah, you had mentioned eight, that. That's really exciting, right? The next 18 weeks, three okay. days a week. So my time is, it's going to be tough, but I'm excited about it. Ah, that's fantastic, I'm David. It starts tonight. So. so where do you think, all right, so where do you think your biggest strengths are currently? Uh, communications with, when I, once I get in front of people, I, I, okay. I, I do very well, I think. I, I you know, um, I, I, I mean, you're charming and charismatic. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then what do you think from a growth standpoint, what do you think our biggest areas of improvement are? What do we look at? Where are you looking to grow? Oh, God. Uh, well, follow up. Lead gen. Right. It, it's huge. You know, and you got to come off as genuine scripts. You know, if you don't believe it yourself, they're not going to believe it. Sure. Good point. So. Let, let, me, let me ask you this, about all the training that you're going through over the course of the next eight weeks, you know, what are you trying to accomplish over, the, over that time frame? Uh, just a solid um, system. Okay. So call it a system, I think. Yeah, that, that's what you have to do. Find your time to do everything that you need to get done. The lead gen yeah. is most important. It, Follow up also. And I know we're a little bit early in the course. We're going to have you back on at the end as well. But to that point, what's the one thing that you're hoping to accomplish with systems and strategies? Uh, to always improve on them. Very good. I, I, I got to get something solid and then just build from that. Uh, I, I would like to go in a different direction with, with video. I've been fooling around with it. I got a gimbal. So sure. I'm all kind of set for all that. Fantastic, David. Well, listen, I know you're really busy today. I appreciate you take, taking the time to have a few words with us. And we'll catch up with you at yeah. the end of the course. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. David. Thanks for joining us. All right. Bye-bye. All right. So we got a break here. We're fortunate enough to have Mr. James Ward, Platinum Level Producer. James, what uh, are you trying to you, you do a lot of business. You've been in this industry for a long period of time. We're at a training event today. What are you trying to accomplish here? You know, um... We're moving from a speed-based to a skill-based market, so it's okay. kind of just uh, sharpening the skills uh, and getting ready for the shifting markets. Yeah, I love it's it. It's really skill-based. So, yeah, got to sharpen the skills. Um, remember how to talk to people. Uh, you know, the days are going to be gone soon if they're not already where, you know, you list a house and you got the 15 offers and you got to 
get back and having purposeful conversations with people, setting expectations, all that stuff. And yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, man. I mean, especially for guys like us, us that have been in the industry for a long period of time, we're really moving into a different area. Yeah, uh, you know, we've uh, seen this before. It'll be its own thing, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, we've got probably less transactions overall, more agents than we've ever had before, and, uh, you know, you're going to have to do a lot to stand apart and uh, sure. you know, make sure you can uh, survive what's coming. So now for you, you have a high skill base. What are your biggest strengths in the industry? I would say the experience, you know, yep. being in as long as I have. And that's not to say that someone that's just getting into the business can't do the same thing. But sure. um, taking part in, uh, you know, events like this to know what to say, how to treat people, how to sure. have the you know, high level conversations, but also to be a student of the market and what's happening and, you know, looking at the past to kind of tell the future, and you know, sure. that's all going to you know, be very, um, uh, you know, sought after by people that are, yeah. you know, getting a little bit more nervous. So, I mean, you got the ton of experience. What do you think from a uh, an area of improvement when we sit through an educational event like this for several weeks? What do you think your biggest area of improvement is? Yeah, getting back to the basics. Yeah, you know, the lead gen is pretty much why we're all here to get back into that. Um, it's amazing so. how you can fall out of habit coming off the markets that we were just in. Yeah, uh, but it, it, again, it's uh, you know, it was, a, it was fun to ride the wave while you, you could, right? Um, but uh, you know, to get back out there and you know, look for the business and ask for it is uh, something everybody should be uh, really learning how to do yeah. and getting back into doing. Yeah, no, I'm with you, my friend. So when you, give me one thing, James, what's one system strategy, something that we're going to try to grab out of this? Um, so probably picking up the phone right. is really should be everybody's answer to that. Um, sure. Start making phone calls, you know, when you're, uh, you're talking to people that you know, uh, you're asking if they want to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, or if they know anybody that wants to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. Right. They're going to say, no, I'm not really doing this right now. But you know, the, the point is that you're going to call them again in a few months and again in a few months. So at some point, uh, and kind of like when you see on, say, social media, when you have someone ask a question, like, who's, who's who are you using for a kid's dentist? And right. you get 30 responses to it in five minutes. You know, are these people that excited about their kid's dentist? Or do they just want to provide a solution and look cool? You know, I mean, yeah. you want to be that option as a real estate agent. And when you speak to people, people that you know that like you, that would recommend you if they remembered to do it, will do it if they are keeping it top of mind. Yeah. You know, it's uh, for me, I could be out in a public setting somewhere and I could hear a you know, a real estate you know, conversation happening. And then, uh, you know, someone else might decide to jump in and say, hey, I know somebody. Yeah, James right? Ward, he's great. You know, give him a call. No, and that's that's awesome perspective. You know, James Ward, 20 plus million dollar year producer. I'm going to interview you at the end of it. And we, let's see, let's see what we pulled out of it. I really appreciate you taking the time, yeah, James. Awesome. I know you're busy. And uh, have a great time at the class. Greg, I love it. Have a good one. Thanks All right, man. Thanks, me. James. Bye. All right, well, we got another fantastic guest that came up, Sujatha Biscara. Sujatha, thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. Now, I'm excited I, to be here. Oh, it's great to have you. And listen, I know you've been in this industry for almost 20 years. Yes. And you are a high-level platinum single agent, really, producer, correct? Well, thank you for that. No, I'm growing my small team. Fantastic. We are, very, we are tiny but mighty. <laughs> it's all That's about quality. Said. It's quality. Yes, absolutely quality. quality. And we've known each other for a long period of time, and I kind of know your path as to you being so successful. So what's someone like yourself doing in a training class for eight weeks? Ah, good question. So I, like I said, I'm growing my team. My team is here now. That's great. Um, and so I'm here with them to go to uh, the training and learn new bowls. You know, they said the bowl is new. You know, they revamped it. It's all new. Um, things that they're going to talk about. Yeah. So that's why I'm here. So how is it so far? Are you pulling some good stuff out of it? Yes. It's very different from the last one that I took. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think it's more relatable in some sense. That's great. And I think it's more conversation yep. uh, now. So I think people can relate to it much better. Sure. So I think the learning curve is going to be shorter. They're giving you some things to think about, which is nice for my team. And I think it's making them more confident on how to approach clients and 
more importantly, to know what to say to them. Sure. Right? So, sure. Yeah. I mean, people like yourself or myself, we kind of take that for granted. We're so used to what to say to people. We say it for such a long period of time. For people trying to acclimate into it, it's critical, right? Well, Words I remember, matter. I remember my first bowl. You know, it yeah. was always like I was not a big talker. So, you know, making conversations was not easy for me. Sure. So just to get some thoughts, you know, things like, you know, they talk about food, right? Sure. Family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, right? Things like that to give those little acronyms that kind of trigger and say, oh, I could be talking about this, right? And we give all these little acronyms. Like when I train my people, I'd give them little things. That makes it very easier for them to think about what they're going to say next. A lot of times when they go on appointments, they're lost as to what should they say, right? Sure. What the, what's the next question going to be? Right. So when they have that already and they memorized it, it's a lot easier. And the flow is a lot easier because they know exactly what they're going to say. What that allows us to do also is not put the focus on ourselves, but actually put it on the client. Actually, listen, if you're not thinking about what you're going to say next, you're going to be listening to the client. And Couldn't agree that, with you more. Yeah. I yeah. think that's a, that's a very, very good lesson. I think that that's what was very important to me. Right. Because I did not even understand in the beginning what it is when they were saying, put the focus on the client and not on yourself. What does that really mean? Like, right. yeah, I'm here he, to help you. But then I realized when I go there, I'm thinking about myself as in, what question am I going to ask next? If they say this, I want to say this, right? I mean, so you're always yeah. thinking about what you're going to say next. To take that out, I think, makes you more successful. Yeah, it's all about listening. And I love the term that you use was flow. And very successful salespeople, they all have flow. You know, because you've done it thousands and thousands of times, so everything just kind of rolls right along. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, right now I don't even think about it. I think it's more like, and I think the minute I understood what the difference is between thinking about yourself and putting the focus on them and their needs, I think huge game changer, right? right. Now I don't even have to think about it because when you're listening, the next, next question is going to come to you naturally. Right. Uh, so, yeah. that's, that, that's great feedback for everyone. Where do you want to be in the next three years? Huh, next three years, that's an important question. I I'm don't know, I them. think, uh, huh? No, no, I said I'm full of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Well, this is a great phase in my life. I mean, I, it's not about more about numbers. I think it's more about growing the people around me. Uh, and I kind of a whole other level of thinking. I, I kind of sometimes yeah. refer to them as my kids. Like yeah. you know how you get that pride and joy when you see your kids succeed. I do. That's what I want for my team members to do to outshine me. Uh, that's wonderful, Sujath. And with that type of perspective, people always get there with the skill set that that you have. And that's, that's really why I'm wonderful. here. I'm training. I'm coaching with them. You know, uh, so you know we're all on the same uh, playing field, right? Yeah. I'm getting the same training that I'm giving them. Uh, it's wonderful. All right. So give me one thing from like a systems, a strategy standpoint. What's the one thing you want to pull out of this class? From Bolt specifically? Please. Mm. Okay. I think there is a lot of things, but the important thing for me is it always starts with the mindset. Right. And so I think going through this class for like six, eight weeks and they talk about it so many different times. So I'm hoping that for my agents, that will cement it by the end of six to eight weeks. I talk to them about this all the time. I think for them to realize that, you know, your mindset is going to determine where you're going to go next and what you're going to do. Sure. And that's the key to success. That's wonderful, Sujath. And we would love to interview you at the end and some of your people. Okay, Maybe sure. you can interview them at the end, see what they pulled out Absolutely, of it. Absolutely, I would love to. They're phenomenal. Oh, that's wonderful, Sujatha. Listen, I know how busy you are. We really appreciate you taking the time well, to talk to us. Thank you so us. much for having me and catching me like this impromptu. <laughs> okay, I hope that was good. <laughs> you did fantastic. Okay. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right, thanks. All right, we just were joined by Eric Fotovic. Eric, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Greg. All right, so Eric, let's get a little background on you. How long have you been in the real estate industry for? So I've been doing real estate for about four years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, how, how's your success level in it? How have you enjoyed it? Yeah, so the first year and a half, two years, uh, I was do, I was juggling school full time uh, and uh, assistant assistant managing at uh, GNC. Okay, and then about two years later, I took it in full time, and since then, I've been selling about <clears throat> three and a half million to four million a year. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a fantastic clip on it, Eric. So, yeah. all right, so we're here. We're at this training for the next few weeks, next several weeks. What are we trying to accomplish at it? Where are you trying to take your business? That's a good question. So my business is trying to go from what I've been kind of sealing, sealing, sealing. 
uh, like ceiling of accomplishment. Right? Ceiling right? of accomplishment. Of achievement. About right. Three and a half to four million. I'm trying to break through to that level to get to about seven, uh, eight million to double what I'm doing. That's great. And how quickly do you want to get there? Well, I mean, the plan is to do it right away. 20, uh, let's go, baby. 2023. Yeah, yeah. Next year. <laughs> and then when you kind of push some timelines out on that, Eric, when we get three years out, where do you see yourself? Where are we trying to get? Three years? Yep. Three years, I'm looking to be doing 12 million in production. Okay. 12 to 15 million, uh, making about, what, $300,000 a year? Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that's great. That's great, Eric. Now, from a, from a skill set standpoint, what do you think your strengths are right now? Uh, I definitely don't have a fear to do anything. I could just go out and um, <laughs> talk to anybody, do anything in that nature. I, yeah. I couldn't tell by the way you were circling the podcast table earlier. Like, get me on. <laughs> <laughs> and what are our areas of improvement? What do we got to focus on? Uh, follow up. Okay. My lead structure, which actually I am working on currently, but I've had a lot of things slip through the cracks. Okay. And a lot of business was lost. So. Right. Well, contact management's critical. Yeah. Right? Make sure follow-ups, uh, that's where the money is. They say right. the money's in the follow-up. Yep. So, all right. So, while we're here, what is the one thing that you want to pull out of this from a system standpoint, a strategy standpoint? What do you want to get out of this? Out of just bold in general, right? Yeah. Out of here. Out of, out of this training. The biggest thing I'm going for is... Getting that system of follow-up mm -hmm. in place. Okay. Because, again, there's a lot of slip-through. Yeah. And I've started implementing things that I've learned from here. And, you know, I, even just two weeks ago, I got a few listing appointments um, just by doing that one thing. So I would definitely say in a general sense, follow-up. Yeah. That's wonderful. All right. So now we're going to hold you accountable to that. So at the end of this, we're going to bring you back on, and we're going to see what system and strategy you're going to implement. Cool. Yeah. Right? So, yep. Yeah. Let's do it. Awesome. Eric, thanks for taking the time. I know you got to get back in. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, bud. Uh, we have Rosalia joining us. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to join us, thank Rosalia. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, my pleasure. So you tell me, how long have you been in the industry for? I've been in the industry about 20 years now. I'm dating myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you been doing it full-time, part-time? Initially, it started as a dual career, and okay. then it evolved into full-time. And how long have you been doing it full-time? Full well, it's about three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the party. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Welcome. <laughs> so where are we trying to get next year? We're in here. We're doing our training. We're learning. We're building. We're growing. What's our goal going into 2023? It's fully developed agency. Um, getting myself into more of a team environment, you know, sure. where I can actually um, uh, fine tune those leadership skills that I've gained in uh, my career. That's, that's wonderful. Now, big picture, are you looking to be a leader within the industry to, to train, develop people? Uh, and eventually, this is what I've been doing for about 25 years of my life. Yeah. I want to continue to, to coach, mentor, lead, and develop from there. Yeah, and you're taking experience from the corporate environment. That's exactly correct? right. That's right. a huge competitive advantage as you kind of build and grow into this career. It is. So where do, I see, where do we see ourselves in the next three years? Well, next three years, obviously, we'll have like a solid business, right? And obviously, we'll be the, the rudiments of creating a team and getting, you know, embarking into uh, expanding, expansion. Ah, that's fantastic, yeah. Rosalia. Give me one thing. If there was one thing that we were going to pull out of this from a systems, a strategy standpoint, overall, what do you think it would be? What's the most Im important thing we need to do? I think the one important thing is to develop that discipline to do the tasks that need to be done so that everything right. else becomes um, easy. Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> everything else becomes easy or unnecessary, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what our founder says, right? Uh, it's, fantastic. it's a great book, by the way, everyone. The One Thing. It's fantastic. Yes. Yep. You kind of strike me as someone who's got a very calming effect. Yeah. With the people that you work with, you're a very calming voice. That is what they say. You're Nick, the how calm, calm is that tempest. voice? <laughs> it does help with negotiations, I would have to say. Yeah. <laughs> so it's even, it's very, very soothing and calming. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what awesome. we need, right? Because that's, you know that real estate is difficult, it's not easy. 
No, it isn't, yeah. especially in the vi- in the environment that we're going to go into, or we're already in, where people are just a little bit more stressed than they were. Exactly. So we need the past a little couple bit more years. of the calming effect. And when you're calm, you focus a little bit more, and you have a little bit more clarity, and then you can make the right decisions. Uh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk with us, Rosalia. You're very welcome. All right, Thank we'll you, catch Greg. up. To, I'm going to catch you at the end of this too. Of at the end, we're going to interview right. you. I'll talk to you soon. All right, Thank thanks, Rosalia. Bye bye. Thank you for taking the time to join us, Alia. Thank you for having me. So, Aaliyah, how long have you been in the real estate industry for? It'll be two years in January. I mean, you came in at the craziest time ever in the industry. Listen, I definitely did. <laughs> uh-huh. um, I'm super excited about it because I'm with the best company, to me, in my opinion. Yep. Just to let you know. Yep. <laughs> Keller Williams. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited to be here. Uh, that, that's wonderful. Now, why are you here? What are I you trying to accomplish? I need to become the better version of myself, not just an agent. So that includes holding myself accountable. I know you probably heard it 30 times today. Sure. Um, But I want to consistently um, and daily do the things that are going to help me become a better agent um, to my clients and for my business. What do you think your strengths are, Aaliyah? Aside from charming? I like talking to people. Yeah. I do. I like helping people. Um, I like making sure that their needs are met. Um, that they're treated fairly. Right. That really is like a core belief for me because I get very upset when people aren't treated fairly. And it's critical. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, inequities. Right. In general. So, all right. So, what do you think your biggest area of improvement or your biggest area of improvement is? Being here at Bold, I think my biggest area of improvement would be um, tracking what I'm doing daily now. Sure. Instead of just doing it and leaving and attending to something else. So now it's just staying focused on what my goal is Mm -hmm. um, and where my end point is. And from a systems and strategy standpoint, what are you hoping to gain? What do we think we could pull out? Honestly, I'm trying to take all the knowledge from the mega agents. Yeah, that's a smart move. (laughs) They know they've done it. A little bit of everything. Um, But... I mean, dedication. Yeah. Persistence. Yep. Um, And again, accountability. Well, we're going to pull you back at the end of it, and I'm going to interview and go through those questions again with you and see how everything worked out. Don't judge me next time. No, No, we didn't judge you this time. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Aaliyah. I think you're getting called back in. Okay. Well, hello, Stephanie Chatty. Well, hi, Greg Graham. Well, I know your training's over for the day. Thank you for taking the time to spend some time with us. Yeah, of course. Thank you for speaking with me. So, all right. So how long have you been in the industry for? A little over three months right now. How do you like it? I'm loving it. Love real estate. Can't see myself doing anything else. Ah, that's wonderful. All right, so what are you going to do to try to take everything to the next level now that you're here? Now that I'm here, I'm going to time block. Time block, time block, time block. It's the most important thing. I've seen every successful real estate stick to their time block like it's the Bible. All right, so if you were to look at the the most important thing you wanted to grab out of this, you get time blocking. What else do you want to learn? Um, I just want to gain the confidence, honestly, to speak to sure. people. Yeah. Um, you know, with that comes practicing, I guess, knowing what to say. Well, nothing makes you more confident than having the education behind you. Right. Exactly. Right. What do you think your strengths are right now? Um, I don't know. I guess that I can push myself. I put myself out there. So I think that's a strength, even though I don't Absolutely do it well, it I think I try. And I know we want to work with time blocking and those are some area of improvements. What else are we trying to accomplish? To become a millionaire, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> You're well on your way. All right, so so give me one thing out of everything. Again, time blocking we talked about, but what's one thing that you would like to be able to grab out of this from systems and strategy standpoint to take your business to the next level? Systems and strategies, I guess. Uh scheduling myself I, yeah i mean I it's, it's yeah right. hey listen i mean at the end of the day the way that you're allocating your time it's critical it helps a lot and you know what real estate is definitely something i want to touch on when it comes to being a mom and working part-time right it really helps a lot this job being um being on my basis doing yeah. things on my terms and in my time really helps out a lot when you have three little kids right <laughs> So I just wanted to say that anybody, you know, all the moms out there trying to look for a career to put themselves into and try to balance it out, 
real estate is something to look into. Stephanie, I love that. That's awesome. Because let's face it, work-life balance, it's, it can be hard, especially with three little kids. Right. Yeah. Well, you're going to do fantastic. We're going to grab you when this is all over, and we're going to talk to you again. Thank you. I appreciate see what else we have. that. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time, Stephanie. Absolutely. All right. So I am happy to say that Mike Carrasso is going to take a few minutes to connect with us. You know, those of you that don't know Mike out there, Mike's platinum level producer. I've been doing this for a long period of time, right, Mike? 18 years. 18 years. Yep. What'd you do before this? Always in some kind of sales. So right. Right before this, I was, uh, I was in sales. I was in the coffee industry selling coffee espresso equipment. Okay. To, to big accounts, like national accounts. Like, sure. No, so I did that for a little while. That was relationship type selling. Hey, how'd you make the transition over from that type of relationship selling over to real estate? Commuted up to Jersey City, and um, I would drive home. There was a sign that said, we are hiring in front of a prudential real estate office. And okay. I said, you know what? I, I get so tired of commuting all the way up north and then traveling all over. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to get my license and, and start selling real estate. <laughs> Little did I know that every real estate office hires anyone <laughs> that gets the license. You're thinking, I'm qualified I'm like, well, for I'm this. Qualified. I can do that. I'm a sales guy. I, I, I literally went in with like a resume. I'm ready to, you know. <laughs> That's how, I, that's how I got into real estate. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Now, were you doing it as a dual? Do you have a dual career for a while? I was doing it a part-time in 2005. Okay. Part-time. Uh, just okay. a little bit. And then 2006, I went into it full-time. Okay. Yeah. And then it's been... Yeah, it's been, it's been yeah. on the upward, upward trend. You know? all, so I'm always trying to get a little bit better. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, I think it, it constantly evolves. It constantly changes. It actually, this type of business uh, really uh, helps my type of personality out. Sure. So staying fresh and staying current with right. what, what the, the, the new trends are is important to me. So, you know, you get such a good mix at events like this. You, you always have a good mix of people that are new, kind of middle of the road, and then people are really seasoned and successful like yourself. Right. What's your biggest driving factor to, to be at a training and an education yeah. event like this? Uh, so, my, so the biggest thing for me is I have my why. I do this to make a living. I yeah. have a family. Um, I, I, I Beautiful hold, family. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And, and, and that's very important to me. And being able to do the, the, the nice things. I like going, taking them on vacations. Sure. And, and I mean, maybe time. Italy. Yeah, maybe, Italy. Yeah, I know. So literally, I, 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 I booked Italy, and then I right. booked Bold. Because when I came back from a two-week healthy vacation, I wanted to hit the ground running. Last sure. quarter of 2022, I have uh, big goals for myself. And right. so, so the, the Bold, it just holds me accountable. It makes me... You know, current, relevant, and yeah. and and holds. Uh, there's purpose to what I'm doing here. I'm not doing this just to make, you know, just have fun, but, yeah. but also to make a, a living. Yeah, and you know what? It's funny. You know, events like this, I've always found them. You know, if you haven't done it for you know twenty some odd years as well, it's it's just a good refresher of things you already know. Right. Right. But right. you lose track of it. You get so busy with things in the day to day. Right. Right. Trying to reel that back in. No, no, I was just going to say yeah. the, the mindset. You sure. Know, just, you're, you're right. You're hearing the same things all over again, and it's just getting you in the mindset. For me, like I said, I'm a warrior, and this next quarter I have some big goals to achieve. Right. And I just felt like it was going to help, you know, push me, push me to, to, to do those things. When you look at your, from your skill set, right, again, so seasoned and so much success with it, what do you think your biggest strengths are? I think my biggest strengths are patience. I think I'm a really good listener. Okay. I don't think that, I think if you're getting into this business to make that quick one-liner, drop the pen in front of people to sign, right. it's not going to work. So, so being a good listener and having good uh, patience, uh, have, building good relationships, like sure. that's it. Building relationships is one of the most important things I, for me. I got to tell you from a sales standpoint too, I couldn't agree with you more. It's that art of listening. Yeah. You know, not trying to think about what you're going to say. Right. Actually listen to what the person's saying right. and, and build off of that. Yeah. And I see that you do that too. When, yeah. when I, when I, when I hear you qualify a, 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 a prospective buyer, I, I listen to what, how you talk to them and you, you're like right at their level. You're like, present in what their goals are and and you're asking the right questions to get them to to give you the right answers you know to be able right. to, to to solve a problem for them sure um so so that's that's important to me too yeah and you know that's what we do though we solve problems and you know our gig's such a people it's a people business absolutely right and how can anyone ever trust you if you're not listening to what they're saying correct correct yeah right if you're too fast i think i, I think so uh, yeah when you ask me the skills i think it's just learning patience and Right. And just being, um, a, a, 
having the skills to, 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 to really be able to act when I'm supposed to act and yep. listen when I'm supposed to. You know, when you, when you say patience, too, I think about it because we're kind of mirror images of ourselves in slightly different industries, mortgage right. and in real estate. It took me a while to really develop a lot of patience. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> Maybe it comes from having all these kids. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, but it takes a long time. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I have, the, you know, I have a uh, set of kids that are younger. Yeah. And, and I have a lot of patience, more so now than I did when I have 20-year-olds, too. So back then when you're, you know, you're just learning and you want to do everything right and sure. you're not as patient with, whereas now I think I'm w way more patient because I, I accept that I fail and we all fail every right. single day, but just to be able to correct it and just be a little bit better the next day and a little bit better as time goes on and setting those future, those short term goals and also the the future yeah. goals, you know. And, you know, and understanding that the whole thing's a process. Right. Life's a process. It is. Absolutely right? it is. That's what yeah. makes it fun or be boring. It, it does make it fun. Yeah. I, I really think so. I mean, I, I'm not one of those people that is thinking, okay, I want to retire. I'd like, you know, I, I wouldn't even want to retire. My, my end goal is just to stay, keep this sharp and keep going. <laughs> like, really, um, I, I don't know what else I would do waking up every day. I can't go to the beach every single day. I could do right. it for two weeks on right. the Malfi Coast. But then after, I want to get, I want to get going again, you know, I want to yeah. be, when I have, there's got to be purpose in why yeah. I'm here. I think you and I even spoke about that before a couple of years ago. It's it's true. Like, what are you going to retire? What are you going to do? do? I mean, do? I don't golf. I no, mean, I don't do either. That. And you and I have that similarity. <laughs> I would never. Like, I like being on the golf feet uh, on the course, right. like walking because it's so beautiful. But the the hitting the ball and I'm not good at it and it's all over the place. Like that stresses me out more. Totally. So why, why don't I just I, go for a walk? I'm a patient man. I don't want to do this. <laughs> so what do you think from an area of improvement standpoint, where do you think you could improve at when you're at your level? Hmm. Oof. I think uh, just being able to, to, to leverage a little bit better. Like yeah. I, I think, with the Keller Williams models to build the teams and, and you want to try to get that going. But I think that's another thing that, that requires patience sure. and, and a different mindset to be a, a manager. And I know you've done it with, with having a team um, from for many, many years. Right. I had them and then didn't have it. And I think as time goes on, and it, I, I think I just want to be more efficient and right. scale exactly what I'm doing. But with the right people, yeah, with the right people that that understand that this isn't easy. It's simple. It's simple if we yeah. do everything, but it's not an easy business. People don't just come in and ready to sign a yeah. million dollar, you know, uh, listing right. or or purchase with you. They're yeah. just not going to do it. No, it's a process again, and then being able to have the, you know, the patience to work with people that are just about quick to the money, right? Right. Because it's not a quick to the money. Game. No, it's not. It's not. And that's what makes it so rewarding, the lifestyle longer term, when you've kind of uh, mastered that and you put the time in and the, and the effort in over a long period of time. Sure. What do you think from a strategy standpoint, as we get into the back end of this year and go into next year, what do you think are some strategies that you need to maximize to get where you need to be? Systems, strategies? Mm. So, so I... I consistently last three years I have a coach yeah and now I'm also doing bold for the accountability so I'm getting it from I'm getting that push from from two different angles I think strategy for me um, as I continue to try to be just a single agent is to get more into more and more into luxury right and, and I'm already there but I'd like to get into the three million dollar and the five million dollars at and the t $10 million listings. Right. And, and that takes some time. It's a t totally different consumer, as yeah, you know. Absolutely. Um, and, and so I think that would sharpen my skills also because it's just, it's like a lateral move, but it's also, in a, in a way, I'm also giving myself a raise. Sure. Instead of doing ten five hundred yeah. five hundred thousand dollar uh, transactions, what's that, five million? I'm doing one at five million. Yeah. So, so you just have to and that's a, a whole different refined. yeah that's a whole different skill set to refine oh absolutely you know, as far as prospecting as well and everything like that right and so with the coaches that i've been working with uh, both with maps I, I did maps i'm doing buffini right now okay um buffini's good it I, is I've done I, that before. and that's sphere and that's yeah. it's it's really just trying to move more into that high luxury sure you know marketplace yeah i mean if anyone can get there it's you because you got all the foundation of everything you do and you're already kind of in that luxury space and i'm already there I'm, I'm well over 800 like yeah. pretty consistently but i'd like to be like in that one million at five million you know that would be sure. like and do like let's say the 10 of those you know that's like 50 sure. million a lot easier than doing you know uh was it 40 at eight hundred thousand? right you know what i mean especially as a single agent oh yeah driving yeah. it and building that yeah so that's for me that's like that's like my goals 
That's great, Mike. And I, I know you got you appointments. You got appointments all the time. I just want to ask you one more question. Sure. Give me one thing. What's the one thing that you can do to make everything else easier or unnecessary? I think for, for me is just to have, to, to have the time blocking really, really like um, hold that extremely dear to me. Yeah. And not waste time. So no yeah. time wasting, but I, I am. I, I'm getting the time blocking in my calendar pretty tight but I, I have to get it even even more refined and yeah. really hold myself true to that. If I'm prospecting and following up during a certain time that I'm doing that and, and getting results and also the appointments that I'm going on that I'm not really wasting my time too much mm -hmm. with things that are really not either come to fruition or really don't uh, don't complement my goals. Yeah, you know I I mean? oh, absolutely. I That's great. Time wasting. Um, um, and, and I'm a problem solver, so I want to solve the problem. And right. sometimes I get entrenched to something that I shouldn't be really getting myself too involved with. So maybe pull my reins. You're a little obsessive. Sometimes, yeah. And if I can't solve it, forget it. Forget it. Kind of work through it. Yeah, it's not, even, it's not even about the money. It's just being able to solve it. Absolutely. You know? You're being able to help the people that right, you're working with. Right, help the people. With. Exactly. Sure. And sometimes, sometimes they're very complicated. I have two right now that are extremely complicated. I think most people... Most agents would have either walked away or lost the listing or something like that. Right. But for me, it's just um, with all the time and even physical that I've done with this, it's not. It's definitely not about the money. It's more about can I get this person who's been in this home for forty years to where they need to be? Yeah. Um, and so they're not in a, a difficult financial position uh, and and that's well, it's very difficult you're dealing with emotions yeah. and that and you're also dealing with the financial side of it and seeing what what, what could be happening in the it, horizon you know and it's the product of caring right you, know, you, you care oh, i care absolutely no yeah i know you do you, yeah. you know you care care at a high level i just think to, to talk about that time blocking for one second for someone like you that's already efficient you're already doing a lot of business young family mm -hmm. older kids like you got a lot going on so I can see from a time blocking standpoint, man, it's got to be methodical. It's methodical. It really is. Like yeah. the time slot I have to go to the gym, I can't do it at five o'clock, not at my age anymore. It has to be yeah. like seven, you yep. know, or no later than seven because I have to get hit, hit running at eight. Then I have to get, you know, do my work, then get home with the kids, then get them ready for bed, then do some more follow up work. Yeah. So it is, it is. It's very tight. And then there are times where I just block out vacation time or sure. a couple of days it's taken away. But I look forward to that. I think right. seeing those little and, and my wife and I, and my kids, we constantly take little trips two days here, three days here. I think that's important for me to be, to um, to achieve all the other time blocks that are important related to this business yeah. and making sure that I get things done and before I can go away. Jordan keeps you yeah. sharp on everything yeah. else at personal work hard time. and play hard too. Yeah. Like I, I, I do, I say that to my kids all the time. It's really important that you work hard, but it's just as important to celebrate and, and enjoy yourself. It's not just about working and getting yourself sick. It's definitely not just about the money for me. It's a complete balance, you know, bond, yeah. mind, physical, um, financial, it's everything. Everything yeah. has to be full circle. Yeah, man, I couldn't agree with you more. And that's a nugget for everyone listening out there. You know, block that time. Make sure you're putting time in for yourself and for the for the things that are really, really important, like family. Yeah, yeah. And then your clients and everything else that comes along with the territory. Right. So listen, Mike, I know how busy you are. I know you got to run. Thanks so much for spending oh, a few pleasure. minutes Thanks with us, Thanks a lot, man. Greg. Yeah, Thank thanks for giving me the opportunity. It's my first time on the, uh, on the set. Oh, you sound fantastic. <laughs> listen to that voice. Nick, listen to his voice. <laughs> it's awesome, Mike. Yeah. Uh, thanks, man. I'll, I'll do like a uh, movie like Shrek as a voiceover now. <laughs> <laughs> New career path. Yeah. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See you, bud. Lynn Rampino, thank you for taking a few minutes to join us. Thank you. I know you're busy. You got stuff to do. No worries. I appreciate it anytime. So, Lynn, again, thank you for taking the time with us. Mm -hmm. I just want to talk for a couple of minutes about, you know, the training class that you're in for the next eight weeks, you know, what we're pulling out of it and, and why you're here. So how long have you been doing this for? How long have you been a real estate agent for? So I have been a real estate agent for over seven years now. It's been seven years I've been in the business. Okay. Um, I enjoy the business. I love the business. Um, I love the people in it. I love the growth I think that Keller Williams offers sure. um, that's there with this business. So as far as real estate itself, I think it just goes to helping people and you know, there's a lot of people in this business that, or I should say a lot of new people in this business of real estate, buying a home or selling a home where they don't understand the process and yeah. you're there to help them. No, it, it's critical. Now, was Keller the first company that you worked for? I was born here, yes. 
I know, we've known each other that long? We've known each other that long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. You know, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, it's about trying to understand how you can help people mm-hmm. and move things in the, in the right direction. Now, you've been doing it for seven years, and you've had some good success in the industry. You know, when you come to this type of a, a training environment, mm-hmm. coaching, uplifting, it's all those things. What are you trying to pull out of it? What am I trying to pull out of it? Um, I think it's mostly that I've learned there's a lot of people that don't understand the process that really need that guidance. Okay. Um, the help to kind of guide them through the process, help them through the process. Sure. I feel like there's people out there that don't understand that when something's new and they don't do it every day, right. and we do do it every day, I feel like we're the ones that should be helping them and maybe not expecting them to know everything. And that's why we're there for them. Right. Right. Now, when you, when you look at for you in what you're trying to pull out of it personally, Mm. you know, is it, is it, is it time blocking? Is it training? Is it developing? Is it a strategy, a system? Like, what do you want to come out of here with Len? Cause you're already good. You're already great at what you do. You mean in bold? Yeah. In bold. Yes. I would probably say purposeful lead generating. Yep. That's great. And I would say um, time blocking, which is very difficult to hold ourselves accountable for. It's almost impossible. It's extremely impossible um, with life itself. But I would say probably um, purposeful lead generating, making that purposeful every day, speaking to people every day. um, And... uh, other than that, I would probably just say um, systems. Yeah. You know, there's so many different great systems and models that they go through. And it's funny with time blocking. That's come up a few times, different people <laughs> we've spoken to. And it really is, especially when you're, you know, when you're mature in life, right? Mm-hmm. And you got a lot of different things going on. Being able to hold yourself accountable to that detailed schedule. I mean, imagine what you can do, Right. If you knew your time, hey, I'm going to do from 9 o'clock till 11 o'clock every day, I'm going to be having conversations with these people. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and doing it on a consistent basis, the sky's the limit. I'd agree. Um, I think when you t- can time block and make yourself accountable to do that, yeah. you're only going to get and gain more business yeah. because of the consistency. And that's what time blocking, I think, would probably pull for us is the consistency to lead gen and bring in that business that we want as real estate agents. Sure. Now, when you go into the, I mean, this class being held in September and we're kind of gearing up for 2023, do you have any particular goals that you want to hit next year? Are they a secret? No. Um, goals. I would, we're recording this just so you know, (laughs) (laughs) retell me again. Oh, we'll see you next year. (laughs) Um, my goals probably would be, um, more listing, more, more, more units, um, bought and sold next year with better systems. Um, so I'm going to go with 25. That's great. Which is more than my 18. So I think, right. um, not think, but I know I can do it. I will do it. Uh, so I just got to make myself accountable to getting those um, systems in bo- on board and yeah. getting that done. That's awesome, Len. <laughs> well, I know you're going to do it. <laughs> Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, I know you got a lot of different things going on. Thanks for yep. taking the time. I kind of re- I pulled you in. I made you yes, come you do did. it before you left. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lynn. And, you got uh, it. And look forward Anytime. to catching up with you soon. Thank you. You got it. Thanks, All right. Me. Take care. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of Your Mortgage Process, hosted by Greg Wareham, produced by Greg Wareham and Nick Pavise at The Social Rift, and executively produced by The Social Rift. Thank you again for tuning in, and we look forward to catching up with you next week.